Hi folks, so on July the 2nd, am I losing my mind? No, July the 2nd we had the new moon solar eclipse in the sign of Cancer, something we've been talking about in the last few videos with a great deal of anticipation. And I wanted to wait for a few days after the July 2nd eclipse because before I did another video, just to give you a sense of what it is that eclipses do and do not feel like. Um, for a certain percentage of the population, they bring sudden information. Uh, as I have mentioned to you, that the propensity for transitioning from this plane to the other, aka essentially talking about mortality and people passing on and news about illnesses or it, it, the, whole, the whole area of transitions and death um, becomes highlighted for people around eclipse time as well. Apart from the small percentage of population for whom dramatic things can happen and um, the other percentage of people for who can be affected by eclipses because someone around them is preparing to or there's news around them or there's, there's a, let's just, struggling to say it, uh, it there's, a, there's a greater sensitivity to and a more information is in the ether around mortality. Just leave it, let's leave it at that. Outside of that, life sort of continues at normal. And I wanted to wait five days after the eclipse to make sure that you understood that every time an eclipse happens and we as astrologers go into panic mode and there's a lot of, oh my God, the eclipses are coming, eclipses are coming. Um, you know, it isn't as if lightning strikes, although we did have that earthquake here in Southern California, or earthquakes, I should say, and potentially more this week. Um, it isn't that an eclipse occurs and within 48 hours strikingly dramatic things happen to people okay that said the astrology of the eclipses and the astrology of particularly this week continues to be somewhat intense and somewhat gnarly but a lot of it depends on the actions that you are being I'm not going to say invited to take, although that's one way. A lot of it depends on the actions that we take. And that makes it seem like the best course of action is to take no action. Because if eclipsy things depend on the actions we're being asked to take, it's best to, it's best to remain somehow uninvolved. That's not the case at all. It actually does require action on our part. There are five things that I wanted to talk about today. First and foremost, Note that from July the 2nd, July the 2nd was the new moon solar eclipse, and July the 16th is the full moon lunar eclipse in Capricorn. The July 2nd eclipse was in Cancer, the July 16th full moon lunar eclipse is in Capricorn. So expect between now and July 16th, because we are between a new moon and a full moon, for the pace to increase and things to become busier. And um, having a harder time uh, getting things completed on your to-do list because the list becomes longer and longer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so just expect the pace to increase and your plate to get fuller as we move along, number one. Number two, something really fascinating. Is it five things? It might be six things that I want to talk about. Number two, this is something I have not mentioned before. Thematically, thematically, the eclipses that are currently occurring are somehow linked to events and vibrations that were present in 2000 and 2001. They're not identical. So whatever is transpiring is not a replay of that, except that I spoke to someone today for whom it sounded surprisingly replay-like, which, which, which was fascinating. But generally speaking, there is a thematic link. So I'm going to invite you. I know that for myself, I'm very clear about what the energetic link is between the eclipses in 2000 and 2001 and the eclipse that occurred on July the 2nd and indeed July the 16th. I would invite you to look back to 2000 and 2001 and specifically 2000, specifically the summer of two, specifically July the 1st, 2000, that particular eclipse. So the middle of 2000. And then the other eclipse that this particular eclipse is linked to was on June the 21st, 2001. So the eclipses of 2000 and 2001 have an energetic connection to the eclipses we're having now. So take a step back and think about what the similarities are between where you're at currently and what it is that you're contending and, contending and dealing with and what it feels like emotionally and energetically. Because that may be where the link is and to events that were transpiring and what you felt like and where you were at energetically 
in 2000 and 2001. Fascinating. Let us revisit number three, the timeline of events and transits in the sign of Cancer where the July 2nd eclipse occurred because I can I need to go over all of that so that I can bring you energetically and make you present to whatever it is that's been going on in the sign of Cancer and how it is that it has been rolling out. I did the video related to the July 2nd solar eclipse a while ago in June, which is unusual. Typically, I will do a video related to a new moon around the time of the new moon or right after or just before. So certainly if you want to find, I will put a link to the actual video I did for the July 2nd solar eclipse at the end of this video. And if it isn't there, just know that I'm processing the video and it'll be there by tomorrow, July the 8th, it will be there. It'll actually be there tonight, uh, night of July 7th, evening of July 7th, Pacific time. But the reason why I did the e eclipse video in June was because certain planets had already moved into the sign of Cancer in a pretty big way and were setting the table for the eclipse on July the 2nd. First and foremost, the July 2nd solar eclipse in Cancer is the starting point for a six odd month cycle that ends on January the 10th, 2020. So July the 2nd, 2019 to January 10th, 2020 is one discrete timeline. So unlike other new moons, well, some people think that's not entirely the case. There's a, there's a four week timeline to this new moon solar eclipse and then there's a six month timeline to this new moon solar eclipse. In addition, and more significantly, because we're gonna to start to feel the pull of the July the 16th full moon pretty shortly, full moon lunar eclipse pretty shortly, the timeline for that particular eclipse started on January the 5th of 2019. So, July 2nd, 2019 to January 10th of 2020 is one timeline. And January the 5th of this year to July the 16th of this year is another timeline. So we're in that time period between July the 2nd and July the 16th where there's a handoff happening between the eclipses of release in Capricorn from January the 5th of this year to July the 16th of this year, with July the 16th being a culmination date for whatever it is that needs to be released. There'll be another set of these eclipses starting December of this year and the first six months of next year. And the second half of this year is going to be influenced by the July 2nd eclipse that just happened and is going to culminate on January the 10th of 2020. So we're in that relay handoff race between two eclipses, July the 2nd one eclipse, July the 16th the second eclipse. This video is really more focused on the July 2nd eclipse and the planets in Cancer because they are really going to be affecting, they, we've been feeling their presence pretty strongly over the past since May the 15th. And and when I said that the astrology of the next week, week and a half becomes a little bit gnarly, I need, to, I need to recap what it is that's been going on since May the 15th. May the 15th, the planet Mars, the planet of conflict, drive, uh, combustion, um, aggression, um, getting things done, we came into the sign of Cancer on May the 15th and was here till the end of June, till pretty much the last day of June. And that in some ways was the hardest part of this eclipse cycle because Mars is not happy in Cancer and a lot of the conflict and a lot of the situations were being expressed in very, um, in, in very backhanded or passive aggressive or um, calculated but indirect ways. Tantrumy, behind the scenes, um, hidden, uh, uh, aggressive but not direct. Um, ways and as a result of which we were all affected by this whether we were the ones who were creating this kind of duplicitous deceit or we were on the receiving end of duplicitous deceit. Um, the planet Mercury came into this part of the chart on June the 4th and then moved out of this part of the chart and went into into Mercury the Sun uh, into into Leo because Leo is the next sign from Cancer. The Sun moved into the sign of Cancer on June the 21st as it does every year and on July the 2nd we had our solar eclipse because when the sun comes into a sign the moon meets up with it as it did on July the 2nd and creates a new moon solar eclipse. Okay. Mars comes in here creates the most uncomfortable part of the cycle so far 
Mercury comes in here June the 4th. Mars comes in here May the 15th. Mercury comes in here June the 4th. As I've mentioned in previous videos, they oppose and square off with, during this time, Saturn, Pluto, and the South Node as they move through the sign of Cancer where the eclipse was going to occur. And those weeks were kind of intense because when you have planets like Mars, especially such a combustible planet, going up against kind of intense but kind of strict planets like don't cut us a lot of slack planets like Saturn and Pluto, that particular time frame can be quite intense. And you can look back on my videos and I talk about these particular transits. The solar eclipse happened on July the 2nd. July the 3rd, the planet Venus entered Cancer, which is a wonderful thing. So if in some ways after the solar eclipse on July the 2nd, you've actually found this last week somewhat peaceful, comparatively speaking, the planet of relationships and relating and harmony and the planet of money coming into the same part of the chart where there was a certain amount of combustibility and deceit perhaps and communication for, for the starting the middle of May but for much of June. Um, Venus now comes in and is here till June, July the 22nd to kind of try to make things better to smooth out the energies. And we are happy and grateful to have Venus doing that because we are in need of a bomb. When I set up the July 2nd eclipse, and the reason why I'm giving you a six month timeline for this is, whatever it is that the July 2nd eclipse has brought us, this particular week, things are gonna start to get heated up as the eclipse handoff happens and we move towards the July 17th, 16th full moon lunar eclipse. There's going to be more that's going to happen this week that's going to be thematically linked to events that have been started and have been rolled off for us starting May the 15th, okay? So as we prepare through navigating through the energies of this week, seeing how we feel, seeing what decisions we make, seeing how we navigate them, just know that when it comes to the July 2nd solar eclipse, yes, there's a six-month timeline that takes us to next January, but July and the first part of August are pivotal months where events occur that get us out of the gate. And the events have been lining up, or rather, as I said in a previous video, the table has been being laid for us since May the 15th in arguably a not very pleasant way. Venus moving in on June the 4th into this, July the 4th, Mercury goes retrograde today. Can you tell? Um, on July the 4th, brings the potential for at least one ally, one peacemaker, into this part of the chart. Today, July the 7th, Mercury goes retrograde in the sign of Leo. And Mercury is going to come back into the sign of Cancer on July the 19th, I'm pretty sure. Yes, July the 19th. So whatever it was that was being communicated between June the 4th and the end of June with Mercury's presence here is going to whatever it is the table that has been laid whatever it is that has in play from a communication perspective is going to get revisited between july the 19th and then august the 11th july the 19th mercury july the 7th goes retrograde in leo on july the 19th it comes back into cancer where all this activity and this july 2nd new moon solar eclipse took place on the 31st of July, Mercury starts to move ahead, and on August 11th, it goes back into Leo. So whatever it is that is pertinent to the sign of Cancer and this new moon solar eclipse, from a communication perspective that needs to be revisited and re-looked at, because whatever happened since May the 15th has not really put us in a very comfortable place. Mercury going retrograde is not exactly comfortable either. And indeed, we're not going to really feel a sense of resolution or peace around whatever it is that the July 2nd eclipse has brought us till after the first week of August. July the 31st to August the 11th, and increasingly as we get to August the 11th is when we're going to feel a sense of all clear. But until then, things are not yet completely settled. They're not yet completely baked. They're not yet completely done. And there's more to come. The first part of the more to come was Venus coming into Cancer the day after the eclipse to help us all out and to create a more peaceful spirit and a more peaceful atmosphere to some extent and put the focus on relationships again. 
the next phase of this, even though it doesn't hit us completely, is today on July the 7th as Mercury goes retrograde. Tomorrow, Mercury, which has been going retrograde, Mars, as I mentioned to you, was in Cancer May the 15th till the end of June. And on July the 1st or so, it moved into Leo. So Mars has moved into Leo and Mercury is in Leo. Mercury goes retrograde today and tomorrow it meets up with Mars. The planet of communication starts to backtrack and meets up with the planet of action, drive, aggression, assertiveness, and combustion. You may feel pressed over the next 24 to 48 hours, but particularly 24 hours, to take an action related to communication that feels necessary and somewhat assertive, maybe even aggressive. It could be being done to address previous and prior issues, to take care of previous and prior um, matters that have not been put to rest, and it may be somewhat assertive and related to setting and addressing your own boundaries. My advice to you is, and this was an epiphany I had in a reading I did earlier today, because there's something about the idea that Venus has come into the sign of Cancer and is trying to create a certain amount of peace and harmony and resolution after all the activities that have been in play that were not so pleasant perhaps and somewhat furtive between May the 15th and the end of June. Venus now comes into Cancer and says, can we just, can we just, can we just all settle down? But at the same time, a retrograde Mercury meets up with Mars tomorrow in the sign of Leo, but meets up with Mars tomorrow. So number one, you maybe feel compelled to take care of previous business and get a few communications out that start to address some previous unfinished business or previous unfinished projects. Or you might be com feel compelled to throw some communications out there that address and feel like they are required to protect your boundaries that may have an assertive edge to them. In an ideal world, because these seem like opposing actions, Venus coming into Cancer and trying to create a bomb and create a sense of peace after unease through since the middle of May, and yet Mercury and Mars getting together and being like, all right, I have got to take care of this. I've got to send this email. I've got to send this mail out. I've got to communicate something, and I've got to make my presence felt, and I've got to get clear on something. I've got to make myself clear on something. These are opposing energies, and in the best case scenario, you will blend these together. Is there a way to send a communication out that still somehow emotionally makes it clear as to why it is that you are feeling compelled to send the communications out that you are, and at least gives you the opportunity to express something and say, this is not personal, this is business. This is something I feel like I need to do and is a best practice to do. And you may get this and think that I am attacking you or I am trying to hurt you or I'm trying to do something to instigate things. I am not. I am simply taking care of this communication because it is outstanding and really I feel that it needs to be done or else I'm not going to be able to sleep at night. And my hope is that that's not how you take it. My hope is that you understand that this is something that has to be done and I would do it no matter what and no matter who. And my hope is that you don't take it personally. There's some sort of blending of the Venus and Cancer energy and the Mercury-Mars conjunction that is going to occur in the next 24 hours that ideally can get blended together, needs to be blended together. Now, Mercury, Mars is going to keep moving forward in the sign of Leo. Mercury is going to go retrograde into Cancer on July the 19th, direct on July the 31st, back into... Uh, back into Leo on August the 11th and sometime in September Mercury and Mars are going to meet up in the sign of Virgo. So it could be that some of the communications that are being sent out in the next 24 to 48 hours don't completely see resolution until we get to Virgo season. And Virgo season is something this year that we are all looking forward to. Indeed we're all looking forward to the middle of August when some of this unease and revisiting things from the past and having to contend with the eclipse energy really starts to become clearer, you know, really starts to become clearer after the middle of August as the planets one by one start to move out of Leo into Virgo. They're going to start moving out of Cancer around July the 21st. They, they'll be in Leo and then starting the middle of August, they're slowly going to start to move into Virgo and that's when, that's when the energy is going to stand to become a whole lot, whole lot cleaner and a whole lot clearer. On July the 9th and July the 14th, the Sun and Venus, no, the Sun, are gonna, is going to oppose on July the 9th. July the 7th today, Mercury goes retrograde. Tomorrow it meets up with Mars. Day after tomorrow, the Sun is going to oppose Saturn. 
Remember, in June, Mars and Mercury oppose Saturn and Pluto. Mars and Mercury oppose in the sign of Cancer, where the eclipse on the second happened, opposed Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn, where the eclipse on the 24th is going to happen. The planet of responsibility and karmically careful actions is going to come face to face with the sun, your soul. So watch for this week. The power struggle between you and another, you and yourself, is going to be in play again. And Venus, which is here, is going to get affected by this also pretty much as you head towards the July 16th lunar eclipse and then on July the 21st. So when I say that the astrology is gnarly as we head into this week, it really kind of is. This communication that you might be planning to send out or transaction or whatever it is that occurs and what it either sets off or whatever it is that this next, next week, you know, there is a next phase to whatever, there is a next phase to whatever it is that has been brewing since May the 15th. And we're going to feel like we need to reverse the truck or the Jeep and go back over a few things. But the process of going back over a few things doesn't promise, isn't, doesn't, seem, doesn't seem like it's going to be pleasant or without obstacles or without challenges. And again, when it comes to the opposition with Saturn and then with Pluto, care is advised. Saturn is very, very strong in Capricorn. And a sense of ethical or responsible or karmically aware, it seems inevitable that we will all be addressing our boundaries. With the sun, our soul, with Venus, the planet of relationships, it seems inevitable that over the next week and a half, 10 days, even into the days after the full moon, that is what is gonna come up. Our own truth is going to be tested and we are going to feel compelled to address it and communicate it, I think. But it will be tested. And there may be things that emerge out of this process that are uncomfortable, even surprising, eclipsy, but so far have been hidden and now become clearer as a result of you taking some action perhaps or somebody else taking some action. The truth being revealed and a truth that has been in place arguably since the middle of May, but especially in June, but is not clear to everybody, being revealed during this retrograde season over the next couple of weeks and us all taking a step back and a deep breath and realizing how it is that we want to contend with and address this. And the fact that the addressing is not going to be complete at least till the middle of August. I think the end of August. That is what is being served up now as the table has been laid. The table has been laid. The eclipse has happened. We're all sitting. The dishes are being uncovered. And I think as we start to pour ourselves a meal and partake and eat and consume, they're going to be things that are simply not going to agree with us. And there's going to be an assertion of our soul and the relationship side as opposed to, which will oppose sense of boundaries and a sense of what we need to lean into and take on is going to meet up with and oppose what we need to release. We're in between the eclipse of what we need to lean into for the second half of the year starting and the eclipse of what we need to, to release in the first half of this year coming to some sort of a clash as we head to July the 16th. So pay attention if after July the 2nd you've had some amount of time of peace and maybe um, thinking that things are complete or thinking that things are peaceful all of a sudden or... They're not. And this next week is going to start to bring stuff up again. And tomorrow might be, but the next 24 hours might be really interesting. Someone, is going, someone may send out a communication or say something or that, that, that sets the ball rolling on this entire process. Um, July the 16th is the lunar eclipse. July the 21st, Venus opposes Pluto. 
on the 19th, I suppose, somewhere, I said, in the meantime, Mercury comes back into Cancer. And on the 21st, Mercury conjuncts the Sun, which starts a whole new Mercury cycle, and that's a separate video I'm going to do. So just fasten your seatbelts. The eclipse happened, the lightning didn't strike most of us. But what the eclipses mean, and contending with whatever it is that came up starting May the 15th and has been brewing, is here and is on us. And the next week, week and a half, is going to bring up uncomfortable truths that we're going to have to get through and it's going to set the next phase of this process up at least till the end of July if not the first week of August and then and then really sort of the final the final really we have till about August the 11th between 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 July the 31st and August the 11th between July the 31st and August the 11th is when we see potential for resolution at least temporarily and some sort of clarity whatever it is that we need to make peace with to some extent and deal with then for the next five months as we head to January the 10th but let's fasten our seat belts because the astrology of the next week or so is is somewhat gnarly my goodness I've actually practically addressed it all six, five out of the six items. Number one, the fact that the pace increases between now and the 16th. Number two, the eclipses. Um, January 5th to July the 16th being one timeline in Capricorn. July the 2nd to January the 10th of next year being another timeline and us being in the middle of it. A whole set of dates I just give you of various, various transits that I'm going to put in the description section in YouTube once I've done, done processing the video so you can get a sense of what really is happening and when over the next week and a half or so. A heads up that the astrology of the next week and a half, two weeks, is the next phase of whatever table has been laid and whatever has been going on since May the 15th that has been making us uncomfortable and has been making us feel like we're in a pressure cooker but has we have not been able to take action on it. As I said, action will come after July the 2nd, and I have a feeling in the next week and a half, it is going to be here. And some of it is going to be dependent on what action you decide to take. And many of us will feel compelled to take some sort of action. Either because something gets revealed or reveals itself, or because we're just sick and tired of the status quo, or we're going to decide to make peace with the situation. In one of my videos, I had said, you do have to decide whether you're going to shit or get off the pot. Someone else suggested I use the analogy fish or cut bait. You're going to have to decide whether you're going to fish or cut bait. And you're going to have to make peace with it. If you decide that the situation is what it is, and you're going to take no action, and you're simply going to sit and accept it, that's fine. Just make peace with it. And don't keep bringing it up or else take action. But the action that is required has to do with your own sense of boundaries, your own sense of truth, your sense of self-expression, your sense of what is true in relationships, and a sense of what feels right and responsible and ethical, and you are willing and happy to accept the karmic consequences of. Because whatever has been set in motion since May the 15th, if it has been deceitful or not completely clean, we might end up having to eat a little bit of crow related to that, at least over the next six months or maybe even over the next week and a half. Just watch the space and see how things unfold. So one was pace increase. Number two, I mentioned eclipses in Cancer, Capricorn, the fact that between them mentioned all the transits that are occurring over the next few weeks. I mentioned that in the next 24 hours, a retrograde Mercury is going to meet up with Mars and we have to blend the energies of standing up for ourselves or sending some sort of communications that we've been wanting to and blend it with the Venus and Cancer energy of trying to smooth out and build relationships and build bridges. If we are depending on what each of us is dealing with we may our communications whatever we are planning to do over the next 24 to 48 hours may be at odds with relationship building and bridge building but in an ideal world we would somehow blend the two and ask for understanding and let the chips fall as they may number five i mentioned that the eclipses that we are currently experiencing have an energetic and emotional connection to eclipses that we experienced in 2000 and 2001 and finally, Mars did move into Leo on July the 1st. And the sign of Leo, Mercury's retrograde in Leo and will be in Leo till July the 19th. So that's two planets in Leo. July the 21st, the Sun will come in here. July the 27th, Venus will come in here into Leo. 
August the 11th, Mercury will come back here. July the 31st, we'll have the new moon here. So the sign of Leo related to eclipses that occurred starting December the 9th, 2016 to the end of January of this year is going to be progressively more and more active. So it may feel like you are slightly conflicted between dealing with events of the immediate or past when it comes to the Cancer Capricorn eclipses that we're going to, that taking center stage and where the bulk of the activity is. But with Mars and Leo, you may also find that you're compelled to take action as to wherever it is that Leo is in your chart over the next, over the next couple of months. So that is going to create a bit of a prioritization. There's a forward moving and a forward looking um, and a behind looking, a need to clean things up and a need to move things forward and not feeling like we have enough time to do either well. That is going to be characteristic of July and August and you're going to have to find a way to balance both and your life will find a way to balance both. Well, I don't know if that's going to find a way to balance both. You're going to be taking actions related to both of them. And between you and your life and you and your time, you're going to experience moments of frustration because you're going to feel like by giving attention to one, you're somehow taking attention and get taking your foot off the pedal on another. It's a little bit like the conflict of taking care of children and a home and a family and working on the other hand. Both are necessary and it's going to feel extremely uncomfortable at times in July especially. In July especially, but till the middle of August because every time you contend with one of these items, you're going to feel like I should really be working on the other. Okay, that's it. 31 minutes. Wow, I had a lot to say. I hope this is helpful. I hope that you're not fearing eclipses as bringing something horrible and dramatic. I hope that the events, at least the nature-related events or any other news we have of people passing and this, that it's not... I hope the suddenness of some, some of this kind of decreases. I don't think it necessarily will, but we're not all of us being hit by lightning. So, but we're still dealing with really momentous things and we're still dealing with really important things. We're not dealing with everyday matters. Some of us have positive things going on and opportunities that are gonna pull us through a lot of this, especially with a new moon solar eclipse. So congratulations if this is bringing opportunities and a forward movement in that way. Even if forward movement is coming with Mercury retrograde between July the 7th to July the 31st, I would say wait till the dust settles till about the end of the first week of August to really see where things are at. Okay, I will leave it at this and we will have more videos coming soon. Um, feel free to share this video, um, comment on it, like it. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, click on the bell icon to be notified of when I do new videos, uh, reach out to me, I'll have my email address there if you want me to look at your chart and do a reading or inquire about reading rates and more details, stuff like that, and I will be back in touch soon. Thanks, bye.